the topic for discussion. Nigeria's experience, Ghana's perspective. Ghana's perspective on what? On the Nigerian experience or what we are about to do? So I had, I had a problem. Um, but you're welcome, my brother. And um, you've heard a story which much of which will be repeated here. Now we have all come to realize that biometric water registration is a costly enterprise. It's a very complicated exercise which requires huge logistical management and close attention to detail. Just as my brother has told you. The first difference between Ghana and Nigeria would be scale. Scale. They deployed 120,000 kits. We will be de uh, deploying 7,000 kits. Yes. They employed 400,000 temporary staff. They call them ad hoc staff in Nigeria. We will be employing about 43,000. They did their registration in 23 days and registered 73.5 million. We will be doing our registration in 40 days and we do not expect to go far beyond 12 million. So Definitely, there is you know, a matter of scale here. But, as I said, even though it is a much smaller scale than the Nigerian experience, it is going to be expensive. I have already put some figures. You know, um, I think I can get two figures. If, um, so we are called the 87 billion man. <laughs> 87 billion naira man. Okay. We uh, in Ghana, the we are put up. Let me find this for you. Those of you who don't already have it. Our budget covers both the um, elections, the, the, the registration, and the, um, the elections. I'm trying to find a figure. Because I won't have time to read all of it. That's why I'm trying to find you the, where the... Um, the figures are all right. For the biometric water registration, the estimates are 148 million 942,378 Ghana cities. For the exhibition, 7 million we will display, we will exhibit. The register after we've made it, the provisional register. We send it back to the places where we compile them for people to go and see. The exhibition will cost seven million four hundred and seventy seven thousand nine hundred and sixty six. As compared with the presidential and parliamentary elections themselves, which would be about eighty seven thousand eighty seven million. 106,961. 
So you can see that the biometric exercise is much, much more costly. Much more costly than the elections themselves. Okay. Now, so there are similarities between the Nigerian experience and the Ghanaian experience in spite of the scale. You see, if the principle is one person, one, one vote, that means that a person's name should occur in the voters' register just once. Just once. I'm not saying that if it occurs just once, you know, uh, dubious things cannot be done. But that means that a person can, in principle, vote only once in his or her own name. So the principle of one person, one vote, would indicate that we must have a register in which a person's name occurs only once. We are trying to achieve that. We are trying to achieve that in the process of doing this registration. First of all, the machine is a machine. Okay, the uh, the computer, the biometric um, 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 machine. If you go to the same polling station and you register and you go back there, it will tell you you have already registered. We are, incidentally, we are taking the 10 fingerprints as they did in Nigeria. All the 10 fingerprints of the applicant. Once you've gone to the polling station and registered, if you go back, and we tried it during the pilot, and um, I remember a lot of people saying, oh, the machine has, uh, has caught us. The parties, doubting Thomas, they wanted to <laughs> make sure that this happens. And we allow them. So there is a local search at the polling station. That does not mean that if you don't have another form of search, if somebody registers in Accra and goes to Bumbrugu Union to register, the machine will not catch him. All right? So you need a central search. And we'll be doing this central search. We won't wait until we finish the registration. Every day, the registration material will be sent to the um, district level. Then it will be sent from the district level by satellite to our central database in Accra. So all districts are reporting roughly at the same time. So the search is being done whilst the registration is going on. By the time we finish the registration in 40 days, we would have completed most of the search. So the remaining search period, we believe will not be more than um, maybe two weeks we would have finished the search. That central search will indicate to us if you have registered in Accra and run to Bumpuru Union to go and register. And what we did during the pilot to see whether this will work. Everywhere I went, I made my driver to register. Everywhere I went to visit, I will have my driver register under some different name. <laughs> By the time we got here, it was known that they had registered many times. So, you have to do both. As Prof said, they are now in the process of linking the data from uh, the various um, states to the central level. We are trying, we learn from the experience. So we said we would do it at the same time that we are doing the, uh, the, 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 uh, the exercise. Um, so, on a continuous basis, material will be sent from the polling station to the district 
and will be sent from the district by satellite to our center district. Let me also say that um, apart from the main database and the electoral commission, we have a data recovery center elsewhere. So as the information comes into our yeah, data center, it also goes to the data recovery center. It is very important because if something happens and we lose the data at the central database in our um, office, we can have the same material at the data recovery center. I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it is. Yes. Okay. But um, we have it. I can assure you that we have uh, we have that. Um, in Nigeria, they did 23 days and uh, register 73.5. As I said, we will be doing 40 days and registering 12, 12 million. So those of you who have been saying that, oh, look, the time is not enough, the time is not enough. And a lot of political parties have said that. From the pilot, you know, the pilot that we did, we've learned some very interesting things. Um, in some places, they did not follow the instructions religiously. So they registered huge numbers. Not that fraudulently done. But huge numbers registered. Yeah, it really, I was there, <laughs> bewildered by the ability of some place for them to do 199, 200 and something per day. But I can say on the average that 100, 120 is doable per day. 100, 120. Some of them, you know, uh, will do more. As Prof said, initially they had a bit of uh, difficulty. In about three days, they become so accustomed to the machine that they can do it more um, more rapidly. We have also anticipated, come to anticipate some of the problems. For example, the fingerprints. That could be a basis of delay. The fingerprints. Some people, by the nature of the work they do, have lost the fine, you know, lines on the uh, on the fingers. And very difficult to get the fingerprint. In fact, in two locations, one person will try for more than 20 minutes to get only one fingerprint. Sometimes the um, the fingers are greasy, so we have had to wash the hands. Yes, you have to wash a person's hands and so on. These are lessons that we've learned, and we will have to, you know, um, put them in practice during the. We will make available water if it's necessary to wash the person's hand. But we have wipes. We have wipes, you know. The, um, and, and we have also realized that maybe after every three or five people have put their you know, hands on the slab, you must wipe clean the slab and so on. Uh, the pictures, for example, um, some of them were not so good. In some cases, excellent. And we discovered why. Mm -hmm. Some people, the positioning of the person becomes very important. So we have to factor that into the training. You put a chair there, everybody sits in that chair. Instead of trying to adjust the machine to this is it. All right? We adjust the human beings to the machine. So instead of adjusting the machine to uh, different positions and so on. Um, if they do that, they get a uh, very, very fine um, picture. So we've learned some of these things. Let me say that um, Prof did not talk about verification. You know? And <laughs> I've been with Prof many, many times before the election, during the election, after the election. 
And the same political parties here said, telling me they've done the verification in Nigeria. I said, no, Trump didn't do verification. Trump didn't do verification. What he did was different. <laughs> what was different? What is verification? He didn't do biometric verification. Verification is not a registration issue. I don't like the word verification. Identification. On election day, I come to, I have already registered. My name is in the register. I'm called Ramadan. Okay, so I come to the police station and I say I'm Ramadan. How do we know for sure that this is the person, Ramadan, whose name is in the uh, register? That is verification. All right? How do you properly identify the person who is coming to vote as the person whose name is in the uh, voter's register? That is verification. And there is no logical connection between registration and okay, uh, verification. There are different methods of verification. As the, yeah, the chairman said, we have been searching for a more secure form of verification over the years. Some of you will remember that at some stage we voted with cars that did not have even fingerprints. Then we introduced fingerprints as a way of trying to identify people. Then we introduced pictures, photo ID cards, so that if you come, you can look at your face and look at your picture. We went a bit further and put names in the register. So if we come, we can look at your card, to see whether it's the same picture in, in the, uh, the register and look at your face. That was a form of identification. Now, what we are going to do will be biometric verification of the voter. We have collected your 10 fingerprints. We will take those 10 fingerprints to the same where you registered. So it's very important for you to go to the place where you registered. If you go elsewhere, it will tell you that you are not here. You are not a registered voter. You will go to the place and it will verify you as somebody who belongs to the, um, um, to the station. All right? That is verification. That is the day of the election. You will go and there will be another machine. It's not the same machine. Another machine and you will put your hand on the machine and there will be an indication as to whether you are, you are Ramadan or not. That is verification. And that's what we are going to be, you know, be doing. And I don't know too many countries if there are any that have ever done it. Biometric verification on the day of the election. But it will be good. It will be good. Because it means that you cannot really slip through. If the register is clean and you have to use your biometric information to access the ballot, then it's going to be very difficult for anybody to cheat. I go and replace the, uh, the machine. We have since been trying to investigate the conditions under which and we have some tentative um, suggestions. You know, for example, if you keep the, the battery in the machine for too long and you're supposed to do, you do that. And there are two, two batteries. You know, if you don't need it, you take it out. The one that is not in use, just take it out. And help. We have also discovered that when you are changing over from one battery to another, the machine takes a bit of time to respond. So people put the battery in there, the machine is supposed to, they say, hey, no, the, uh, the, the camera is not working. Then we say, okay, let's get ready to call a, a technician to come and attend to it. Anyway, all of a sudden, no, it has come on. Yeah. 
it takes a bit of time to communicate. These are things that we have learned from the pilot that we're going to factor into the training. It's very important. But some machines may break down. For the registration, it is not too critical because we have 40 days and beyond. And we have time to prepare. What will be more critical will be the verification machines on election day. I can assure you, I don't wish it, but some will break down. Because where, in places where they have tried to verify even only the card, only the card, some machines have broken down. What do we do when a machine breaks down? You know, and let me tell you, uh, <laughs> one time we went to see some, some group discussing whether they could help us with verification machines and so on. And this question came up. So the person said, oh, if it breaks down, then we will use the, 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 the picture on the card, the picture in the, uh, in, in, in the register, and the person they said, if that is the final, if that is the final, why do you buy the machine? So you won't pay for the machine. They said, if it comes to the point, then you are going to go look at the picture in there, look at the person, and look at the picture on the card. So that is the final. If that is the case, then there is no need to buy the machine. And that is the reason why they did not pay for the uh, uh, verification machine. <laughs> but we have to, if it comes to the crunch, you have to do that. There's no doubt about it. You have to do that. So we have to agree with the political parties exactly what happens when the machine breaks down. All right? And some machines will break down. Either, either uh, because of um, environmental conditions and so on, or because of deliberate human error. Yes. All right. Just have some people go and seize the, uh, the uh, yeah ballot boxes or the uh, you know ID cards of certain people to prevent them from. You know. They can do the same thing to the machine. Right? And these machines are very costly. We are going to try to get. One per 20, we have about 23,000. We need 23,000 of them, not 7,000. We need 23,000 of them. One for each polling station, plus some backup. So we should be thinking in the region of 30 million US dollars for the verification. It's a very, very uh, extensive exercise. You know. And uh, I can assure <laughs> a prop that. We took some lessons from um, their exercise, you know, and I hope that um, what we are doing is uh, we, we are able to achieve it, and uh, then it can be fed back into uh, the system. We can learn from one another. It is we also we also design our own system. We did our own purchasing. We did not farm it out to some international organization. You know, we did our own purchasing. And we came, we came under all difficulties. Yes, it's a huge, um, <laughs> it's a huge contract, and everybody wants it. And pressures are coming from here, from there, and so on, and various condemnations. You know. Sometimes I, I suspect that paid press, you know, indicating that oh, this is done. They don't know anything. These people don't know anything about verification. All of a sudden, millions of experts. You know, emerged in Ghana when we were going around the world looking for experts to come and do this work. All of a sudden, millions and millions of you know experts yeah, emerged in Ghana, abusing us. You know, for example, when we are buying the the the, the work uh, the work camp, the yeah? yes, the um, two two megapixels. We were insulted. This is inferior. 
You see? Until you told them, EU, almighty EU uses 1.2 megapixels for the same purpose. All right? And yet we were said, they said we should go and buy 10, 10, and they knew. Yes, 10 megapixels. For what? Huh? All right? The scanner, the scanner, uh, 500, uh, no. yeah, DPI. They said go and buy 1,000 DPI. 1,000 DPI? In fact, for the kind of verification, no, the um, biometric registration that we're doing, in that civil biometric, that 1,000 doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And yet they said, look, these people are cheap. They are going to buy 5,000 no, DPI instead of 500 DPI instead of 1,000 no, DPI. We were insulted, everything and so on. Please, I can tell you that we know what we are doing. We know what we are doing. And insult or no insult, we'll go ahead and do it and take responsibility for what we do. Thank you. I guess you are not surprised uh, Dr. Farijan ended by saying we are going to do it and we'll do it and take responsibility. Let's give him another round of applause. I, I believe um, he shed more light on this. Um, we've heard from the chairman of two powerful electoral management bodies as we call them, the Independent National Electoral Commission of Nigeria and then the Electoral Commission of Ghana. But to these uh, discussions, we always want a civil society perspective. And, you know, it's very unusual if civil society came and said the same thing that the chairman of the Electoral Commission has said. You necessarily have to be critical and also bring other perspectives to it. So I would invite uh, Dr. Jibreen Ibrahim. At this stage, I think we probably could sit and have the conversation because they've adopted the main system. Oh, no, he wouldn't say it. Okay, come. Okay. Just welcome Dr. Jibreen Ibrahim. I hope you would shed light on both verification, not only registration and verification, and how that helped you improve the quality and integrity of the election. I will say what I want, not what you want. Uh, panelists and my